Hi, my name is Tristy. If you're looking for a way to install the main stack, then you've come to the right place. So I'm going to take you through uh, hopefully a really nice and quick introduction to how you actually install all the software that you need for the main stack. What I've got open on my screen is the bossable.com landing page. So that's my website and I've just posted a, a post on um, and all the steps that you need to get started with the main stack. So let's get into it. Um, before you do start, there's a couple of things that I will let you know. Throughout this little tutorial, we will have a bit of a play with the command line utility. So I'm using PowerShell over here and you can see that I've got it open as an administrator. Uh, if you need to do that, you need to right click and open an, as an administrator. I'm using a Windows 7 machine, so PowerShell is, is what I've got here. If you're using something else, please find the right command line utility for you. I've also got a browser, so I've got Chrome open over here, and I've got a couple other things that are hiding behind these windows. I've got WebStorm open over here. You can use something like WebStorm or Sublime Text or uh, Notepad or, or Notepad 2++ or whatever, whatever you fancy. And I've also just got Windows Explorer open over here as well. So we'll need these four things. If you've got access to them, then that will make this process nice and easy. Okay, to get started, uh, if you're a Windows user, you need to make sure that you've got Python installed. You can grab a link from the Bossable post. Um, and you also need to make sure that you've got Microsoft Visual Studio 2012 Express. Uh, these two things, if you've got them installed, will definitely help you out uh, as you're going through the node installation process. Whether you're a Windows or Mac user, once you've got those things, um, the next thing to do is go ahead and install Node. You can grab that just by clicking on the link here. That will take you to uh, nodejs.org. And you really just need to click the nice big green button in the middle. And the current version uh, of Node is 10, uh, 0 0.10.31. Pretty much every time I go and create a new app, I just go and check or which version of Node is the most recent and I grab that version because they, they seem to update it all the time, which is good for us. You just download the file. It's not that big. It's, I don't know, maybe about five or six megs, uh, an installation wizard that will just guide you through the process. Just go with all the defaults. You want to end up with Node being added to your path. Okay, so as long as it's in your path, that means that when you're using your command line utility, you can actually access a node and use it to do uh, things on your computer. I've also got a, a link here to Git. Git's pretty handy. Git's a source control tool. You don't actually need it for, for this tutorial, but it's nice, nice to have. Um, especially if you want to make sure that you've, you've backed up and saved your work. So let's just jump down to this section here. It says start the global main stack installation. Now installing something globally, what does that mean? It's kind of a funny little process. Installing something globally means that you're installing it in a central place, a central location that you can then uh, access or, or kind of talk to from any app that you install or, or, or run on your machine. The great thing about installing something globally is you really just need to install it once and you can use it as many times as you like from all the different apps that you in install um, or, or set up on your on your machine. All right, when you see the dollar icon, you, you kind of ignore it. It's just there to indicate that there's some command line instruction uh, that you need to grab and put into your command line utility. So let's kick off then, um, and it's easy as once you've got Node, we're just grabbing, just copying this line here. Um, the first thing we're going to do is use Node's Package Manager, NPM, so NPM stands for Node Package Manager, to install, to globally install, which is the minus G here, um, this package called Bower. And, and Bower is actually another package manager, so we're using Node's Package Manager to install another package manager called Bower, which uh, lets us easily access packages um, primarily for client-side related activities. So Bower is really all about client-side packages. So for example, uh, when the, we go through the process of installing Angular, it will be done using Bower. So we grab that and I can just come over here and um, paste that straight into um, PowerShell. 
So now I've already got Bower installed, so I'm going to um, change that from install to update. And I'll just check to see if there's another version of Bower available for me. Um, now, why the system's actually doing that? One thing I will share with you, if you don't have an easy way to um, paste into your command line, just go up the top here to the title area and just right click and go to edit paste. Um, some command line utilities don't let you paste as easy as, as PowerShell does. Actually, that's one of the reasons I do use PowerShell. Um, all right, we'll, we'll let that run and I'll know when that's done um, by just waiting for the command prompt to come back with another um, another sort of prompt, if you like, and there you go, that, that's what it's done. So it's come back with sort of an empty prompt waiting for my next instructions. Um, and that tells me that there's actually no update that I need from Bower. I'll go and grab the next one. So this time we're gonna install Grunt. Again, we're gonna do that lo globally. Um, now I've already got it installed. So again, I'm just gonna change that to update. Um, Grunt, what's Grunt? Grunt's used to really just automate repetitive tasks. So its its job is to make your job easier. Well, one of the last global things that we need to do is, is install Yo. And Yo, so again, do the same thing there. I'm not going to install, so just do an update. Yo is what they call a scaffolding tool, which doesn't really mean too much. It's, it's kind of a weird way to explain it, but Yo is, um, maybe better explained is, is sort of a pre-population tool. It, it helps you pre-populate parts of your app and kind of set it up nice and quickly. The last thing that we're going to install globally is the mean JS generator. So there's actually um, a few different variations of mean, uh, the mean stack over on, on GitHub and um, the one I've decided to use here is Mean.js. Um, Mean.io mean is probably the more, more common version of Mean. Um, the key difference between the two is Mean.io packages server-side code and client-side code as one package. So it's all kind of in, in one package. Whereas Mean.js actually splits the server-side code and the client-side code um, as two separate parts of the, of the app. Um, directory or the app structure. Um, I kind of think that it's uh, it's better for someone who's starting out. Um, you know, if you're brand new to Mean, start off with Mean.js, um, but try them both and you know decide which one you prefer more. There is more to it than just the structure um, in terms of differences, but I like Mean.js. There's a few things that it has, which I think makes life a little bit easier. Um, and you know, having the Go generator is, is one of them. Um, all right, now that we have these three or four things, uh, we can now create our app. So just to reiterate, I've gone through the process of updating uh, and all of the things that I have here are already um, updated um, or I've got the most recent version of them. But if you didn't, you'd see a whole heap of lines um, running through your command line utility. That's all good if, if that did happen for you. All right, now we go ahead and we actually want to create our app and we want to create it somewhere. We want to set it up somewhere. Um, to do that, we, we go and grab a folder somewhere. So for example, um, I've got a, a, a tutorial library in there. I'm going to create a new project. So I can just you know, create a new folder in here. So you know, same as you would when you're storing any other file on your computer. Um, I'm gonna call this, um, let's say, starter mean project. Oops, project. And I'll just jump into that folder. Look up the top here, copy that, and just say CD, so change directories into that folder. Okay, so nice and easy. Basically what you want is your command line to now point to the, the, the folder that you want to create your app in. Um, once you've done that, it's, you, know, you, you can do that the easy way that I have by just going and creating a folder in, um, in, in Windows Explorer. Or the other thing you can do is, um, is just use the um, make drive. And now, now for, the, for the fun bit. Um, now we just copy yo, mean.js. So what we're doing now is we're saying to yo, 
our, our scaffolding tool um, that we want to create a new app um, using MeanJS, using the generator MeanJS that, we, um, that we've installed globally. Now, if you, if you notice, for the first four things that we installed, we could install them from anywhere. It didn't matter because we had this minus G command that we're using. Whereas for these last couple, or this last um, command in particular, we've actually navigated into the particular folder that we want to use to install the main app because we're doing that locally. So local means you're, doing, you're installing something in a particular folder, whereas globally means you're installing it sort of in this, in this central place. So we hit enter, let me do that, and just wait for Yo to kind of kick off and, and do its thing. Um, and it will now just ask us a series of questions and we just answer those questions and then it will go through the installation process for us. Great. So once you see the welcome to Yeoman, ladies and gentlemen, um, we just go through these questions. So it's nice and easy. So what would you like to call your application? So call this one um, Starter App. Um, how would you like to describe your application? So you've got two options. You can either type something in to describe your application or you can just hit enter and just go with the default values. And you can always change this later on um, within your app. I think most of these details end up in your, um, your package.json file, and we'll have a quick look at that in a sec. So grab that. I'll just hit enter. I'm just going to go with the defaults. What's your company name? So I'll just go with Bossable. Um, do you want to generate the article example CRUD module? Um, if, if you're wondering what the article example CRUD module is, is it's an example that you can choose to install with your main app. And it's really about creating an article. So if you think about if you were creating a, um, an article in a newspaper, for example, the, the process for creating the article, um, reading the article, updating the article, and deleting the article uh, can all be set up by just typing in Y here. Um, and that will just set that up in, in your app. So your app will kind of come pre-populated with this article example. Um, then you could use that information and change it up as you like. Um, we don't need to do that because in the next tutorial, I'll actually show you how to create your own CRUD module using uh, your own um, entity. So it doesn't have to be article. It could be customer or it could be um, you know, cars or, or or whatever entity you want it to be. So we'll do that a little bit later on. So I'm going to, I'm going to say no here. Um, it also asks what Angular JS modules you'd like to include. Um, the things that a that are already identified with an X next to them. These things are already selected for us. Okay, so if you didn't want any of those, you can just uh, go to the particular one, so just by using your arrow keys and just hitting the space to select or deselect um, whichever one you wanted or didn't want. We're just going to leave them all in there. This is an important one because I remember when I first went through this process many, many uh, months ago, I wasn't sure what was going on with these X's and, and why when I got to the installation process, Angular wasn't there. So just keep that in mind, leave all that as it is and just enter to accept that. Now the installation starts. Now this can take a bit of time. Um, it can take quite a long time actually. So you would just let that run. You'd probably go off and go to coffee or something while that was happening. Now for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm just going to cancel that just by hitting control C, control C twice. Um, and I'll take you to one that I've prepared earlier. So I'll just jump over to um, what would happen if this had all ended. So let's just say all oh, the installations happened um, and I've now got an app that's sitting uh, in my directory and I'll just move over to where that is. So if we go over to my main project, can see that these are all the files that you'd expect to be set up and created for you uh, once um, once the installation process had completed. 
Um, and, and that installation process can take a while. So it might take, say, 15 to 20 minutes to just go through that installation. Um, and there's nothing that you need to do in that time. You just got to wait for it to download what it needs and, and install what it needs and, and set up a structure that looks something like this. Now, if that installation process fails for some reason, um, I do have a point about that over here in my um, in my post, um, you would just type in npm update if that did fail. Now, assuming it doesn't fail and all is well, uh, we we then have um, one more thing to do before we can actually start the app. So if I just navigate to this directory, so cd to that, um, the one thing that we need to do before we can actually start the app is actually to hook it up with the database. We haven't done that yet. Um, so, and I can just show you. So if I just type in grunt here, so we said grunt was the task runner, the runner, the process that actually runs certain tasks for us. If I type in grunt here, grunt goes to running a sequence of tasks, whatever tasks that we've set up. Um, or, or the app actually comes kind of pre-populated with. So things like it will go through and um, lint, it will go through and minify, um, it can really do any of those things to kind of um, validate or, or minimise um, the size of the app for you um, based on what you've set up. So, so what it's doing here is running through um, the different tasks that it's been asked to kind of set up. Um, now, in a sec, this is going to fail because there's no MongoDB uh, set up here. And we'll just let it do that. Fail, fail. Okay, there you go. So, could not connect to MongoDB. Error, failed to connect to local host, so on and so forth. So um, don't worry about trying to download um, MongoDB and try and install that locally or any of that stuff. You don't need to do that. Um, all we really need to do here is, uh, is connect to a hosted version of Mongo. There's uh, sandboxes that are available for free that you can use while you're, you're, you're playing with and setting up your, your app. So don't bother about trying to install Mongo locally. All you'll do is end up with, um, you know, two and 300 megabyte files for no purpose because there's easier ways, okay? So I'll show you how to fix this little error here. We do that by, if I go back to um, the, the post, we've got this section here. I've got this section here on uh, set up a MongoDB database. Uh, two key places to get the database sandbox from. Either go to MongoLab or go to MongoHQ. Um, and as of, I think, last week or the week before, um, they are now known as Compose. So, great. Um, when you click on that, you'll be taken to their website. It looks something like this at the moment. Um, you can just click on Log In. Once you log in, just click on Add Database. Just click on Sandbox as a free 512 meg free database. We need a database name, so we'll just call that um, mean database. Click on add. That's creating that database for you. Just click on admin. Um, and we'll go across to users. And we'll just add a new user. So we'll call this guy mean user and mean pass. Please don't use these terms, but great for a demonstration. I'll just remove this other one. I think there's a default one that it must have. Um, and I'll go back to overview. So what we actually need to do is grab this connection string that sits under Mongo URI. So just copy that and jump over to um, your directory. So what we're looking at is this file, uh, oops, not there, lives under config environment 
development. So this is the file you want. So if you don't have um, WebStorm or Sublime Text or anything like that, you can just open this file and modify it directly here. What I'm going to do is actually just open this up in WebStorm. Okay, now um, we go across to development. So I've got development open here. You need to just find in the development.js, so we're in the app that you've created, the name of that app, config, and in environment, we're in development. We just find line four where it's got this DB here. So that DB, that database doesn't exist anywhere, which is why we had the fail. Um, just delete that and paste in the URI that we copied from over here, from, um, from Compose. Okay, and we just need to change the user, so to mean user, and change the password to mean pass. I think that's what I used, and just save that file. Now, as soon as you do that, Grunt's already listening to this particular file, and if it sees that there's been some changes, it's going to automatically restart for us. So you can see here that um, we've now got MeanJS app started on port 3000. That's a really good sign because now we can just go over to port 3000. And if all works to plan, you should see some crazy stuff going on in your command line and looks like something like this and you should see the MeanJS homepage appearing in your, um, in your browser. Now, if you've gotten this far, then congratulations. You've just now installed and got the MeanJS stack up and running. So well done you. Um, if you haven't, uh, you know, please let me know in the comments and I'll see if there's anything I can do to help you out. Uh, thanks for joining me. This is my first uh, tutorial. I um, would love to hear any feedback that you have for me. Um, and sorry if I was speaking too fast. Thanks very much again.